I just want to know real quick, do we live in a simulation? You know, I've been wondering that more and more as I've gotten older. Um, Vic What's up, guys? Colin Iyer here, and we're doing an exclusive interview with the Matt Gregson. Yes. So I just want everyone to know, disclaimer, this is a real, unscripted interview with a real human being. This is Matt Gregson. He doesn't know. Uh, he might have heard a couple of questions earlier yesterday when we were kind of shooting, shooting the shit, but he has no idea what the questions are. Honestly, I don't even know what all the questions are. I have some sort in my head. We got some questions asked on Instagram by some followers and friends, um, but we don't really know what's going to go down. We just want to introduce you guys all to Matt Gregson because he is moving here and joining the crew in like two weeks, so. This is just going to be something. Oh, here he is. Matt's iPhone has entered. Matt Gregson, raw. I bet he's like outside in the dark or something. <laughs> 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 I was right. Gregson. So we're here with Matt Gregson, one of the legends of the world. Um, so first off, Gregson, we got a couple, uh, just, uh, warm up, uh, icebreaker questions. Um, I know you recently graduated college in December. So, uh, first we should have asked you, you know, what's it been like, uh, post-college? It's been a ride, uh, post-college, you know, it's been, it's been good, you know, started a, uh, job, first full corporate job. So really got to see what the, <laughs> the, the corporate setting was like and everything like that. You know, a little time for fun and stuff. I traveled a lot, went to a lot of different cities like LA. New York, Nashville, so a lot of different fun stuff. Just got back from Michigan. I uh, put in my uh, two weeks last Monday, but like, apparently there's no such thing as two weeks. So now at least I have a couple couple weeks to get my uh, shit together. Um, starting to, you know, getting ready for the big LA move. About to move out with Cam and Kyle. Um, so pursue from California. You said you got to see what the what the corporate life was like like right can you describe it tell me what from your perspective what what the corporate life is like um i mean it's it's like you know you take your college joes and you put them in a in an office setting you know it's it's not as boring as like the traditional you know 20 years ago suit and tie kind of thing um you're talking to people on the phones um you know at least in the sales position you're always you're helping people putting them in a better position so i liked that at least um, you know there's there's happy hours and you know, happy went hour. to a few happy hours and hopefully the new company will have that too. So do you have any advice for people in college now or getting ready to graduate and go on to the Joe corporate world? Definitely, you know, definitely, you know, I would say definitely just, it's all about uh, networking, you know, having your, you know, it's all about having the connections and stuff. You know, a lot of times when I was a freshman going into college, you know, they tell you, you know, you're so bent out of shape about what classes take, what major, your GPA, all of that's important. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to make the connections to be in the best spot possible to get you in the best, um, you know, best company, best city, you know, stuff like that. Um, Greg, so I just want to let you know that you couldn't have picked a better location to do this interview. I, <laughs> Dude, it's not, I can't. Can you see I me know. all right? I can see. You're fine. You're, you're good. Um, yeah, it's the people want to know, you know, you were vice president of the club swim team. You were D1 athlete. I mean, you were in the show choir. How did you do it? You know, I just kind of took one thing at a time, you know. I realized what I was good at, and I just kind of went for it. Like, it's all about, you know, I just took one thing at a time. Everything you do, just work hard, and there's always time for fun later. So that's that's how you know it. So <laughs> you sure it's not the other way around? There's always there's always time for work later. <laughs> I mean it depends on the situation, but you know. Oh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Exactly. That's Joe sure. a dull boy. Gregson. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta explain the Joes for the people who don't know what yeah, like you, you said college Joe. Joe and you put him in a corporate setting. You're always great you're always mentioning Joe. I mean Joe is just your typical your typical person really that's really all it is it's just it, the term came back from when our old cross-country coach uh, mitch bentley um one time we were just sitting around a campfire one day and he was just like you know i really thank you guys for uh making sacrifices you know not just being the typical joe college some of my friends were getting drunk in college and just being joes and you know that's that's kind of where it came from and then from there it was just like a joke it's like oh if you're going out you're a joe but like at the end of the day everybody's kind of a joe like we've all call, called each other joes you know you can still feel like you're the best at everything you'll still be a joe but <laughs> i mean 
um, you know, obviously oh. Joe Ohio. I'll be a Joe LA. So all all Joes are people, but are all people Joes? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just kind of like a, it's just a term. So I'm like, you know, I'm like sitting on a Joe porch. Like obviously this is just a regular porch. Um, you know, that's a Joe Joe American flag. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You you know what it you know. I, I, and, yeah, it's like average. Like like gold retriever or just the Joe dog. All right, here's my next question. And then we, we have a lot of fan questions. Because you have a lot of fans, but we'll get to those in a sec. I just, I just want to know real quick, do we live in a simulation? You know, I've been wondering that more and more as I've gotten older. Um, you know, it's like, I don't know, especially like after visiting that one beach we went into in L.A. with the person running like a robot and like... I don't know, I just kind of felt like I was in a video game. And I don't know, the way the world's been lately, I'm just like, dang, like, I'm like, wow, like... I don't know. You just get that feeling that you might be in a, a simulation. My job felt like a simulation. My nine to six, I was just like, is this even real right now? Like, what's going on? It does feel like it's a simulation. I don't want to say it is, but it's starting to feel more and more like that. But And there's a lot of NPCs out there for sure. Yeah. What Greg was referring to at the beginning, we were at, at Venice Beach or maybe it was Santa Monica. We're in LA. There's a guy on the bike path and he is running yeah. in, in the most NPC way. <laughs> I feel like I was in the GTA video game and they... They had the roller skaters and <laughs> so. All right, Gregson, we're going to transition to fan questions. Um, first question is: Drew Gleason wants to know what is your favorite four loco flavor? Oh, I don't know. I really liked the um, new USA flavor. They had that at Loco Ball this past year, and the USA flavor was really good. Um, I could drink like I could drink those all night. Like you mix a little bit of water in them, and it doesn't even taste like a four loco. Yeah, USA flavor. I didn't even know. Yeah, he was my bartender actually. So. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, USA. Yeah. Rad Brad, you know Brad Cunningham. He wants to know: Is there any chance of a big band having a fest season show? I don't know. So it's it's been kind of breakfast lately. They were well. Uh, you know, obviously, so we're planning on doing something. Gregson's, like, trying to figure out in his head what, how much, what he can say and not say. Well, so we're supposed to do something for Catsby's, but apparently we only have one song down right now. We got we got a lot of work to do. And you're not going to be there. It's an expensive plane ticket. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to fly. I don't know if I can fly back for one song, you know, but, um, I mean, as much as, <laughs> as much as I'd, you know, as much as I'd want to do one more show, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. I mean, maybe I'll convince the guys to get together and do some sort of something. I mean, I'll be there at a fest this weekend, so you never know. Maybe maybe we'll jam out a little bit or something. You think your Vic Band career is uh, – you think you're retiring from the Vic Band? Is that what it sounds like? I mean, I, I'm not retiring. I'm just going to bring it to uh, bring it to L.A. So. Here's, a, here's another easy one to um, get back to the basics, and then we'll get back into the – the non basics. Um, Drew Gleason wants to know what is your favorite track and field event? Um, well, I mean, it used to obviously be like the 3200. I mean, that was when I was in my prime shape. Um, obviously, right now that would be pretty difficult, but I'd say I'd say 3200 5k, like that, that realm would be my favorite. All right, and now we have a question from Eric McKean What are your thoughts on the Travis Scott situation? All right, um. You know, obviously, I mean, it's hard to know the full story. I don't want to be, like, controversial here and everything. But, um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, like, scrolling through TikTok one day, I saw a lot of different viewpoints of it. You know, I saw viewpoints of, you know, oh, it was a ritual, um, which, I, you know, obviously, like, it, the way it, like, play, the way they, like, viewed it and, like, filmed it, it made it look like that, you know. And then I also saw a film of Travis, like, calling out people on the stage saying if he was all right but his apology wasn't the greatest i think i think there's some stuff we don't know about but i mean i like his music i mean he's he's gas on the mic but like i think i think he was in the wrong probably but it's hard to know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna call anybody out i have a question what would you do if you were travis scott in that situation how would you have handled it gregson i definitely would have handled it like better like i would I wow, yeah, be, give me some details here Just i would have stopped the show like he should have stopped the show so yeah i think he was in the way for that yeah yeah it was a ritual yeah whatever yeah, what does what what that mean <laughs> <laughs> all right gregson are there more doors or wheels in the world um i'd say there's more i'm thinking i'm looking at all the doors around here but then i'm thinking about like all the cars 
there's definitely more wheels like look think about how much like think about all the cars the transportation all the highways that you just see i hear cars like all on the highway right now i only see like a few doors based on your current surroundings you're gonna go wheels i'm gonna go wheels because every car has four wheels some have more actually though i feel like there's more houses than yeah because keep in mind there's definitely more doors there's definitely more doors. wheels keep this in mind skateboards bicycles dollies dollies they all have wheels shopping carts but no doors motorcycles true yeah i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with team wheels just because like there's more transportation and everything like that like in the world like you got to think about all the trains all the the metros even airplanes have wheels gregson's team wheels (laughs) all right gregson um what are your thoughts on a possible afterlife do you believe in past life or life after this (laughs) we're getting all spiritual here yeah, I definitely, you know, I've been actually getting a little more spiritual lately, but in a good way. I believe in ghosts. I believe in, you know, I believe in all that stuff. If you were a ghost, if you die, Gregson, and you come back as a ghost, are you going to haunt people? Are you going to be a dick ghost? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I got to use the golden rule on this one because I guess if a ghost was messing with me, it would scare the shit out of me. But like, you it would be kind of fun. To, <laughs> it would be kind of fun to like mess around with people. And You've had ghost encounters, I remember. At the Vic, a couple times. Can you talk about one of those incidents? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I did have a ghost incident. So yeah, there was one time I was just. It was about. It was in May, twenty twenty one. I was uh, sleeping in bed. It was in the middle of the night, and I don't know. I was. I think I was like in the middle of a dream or something, and I felt like I was like talking to somebody. And all of a sudden, I wake up. My eyes are open, and I'm still talking to this person. But the it's like on the wall. There's like a face I'm talking to and I snap out of it for a second I'm like wait what the fuck like I'm talking to somebody on my wall so I flip on the light and then no- nothing's there and then I'm just like that was weird and then I just go back to bed but had you had any drugs or alcohol that night no no I only had one beer that was it so yeah that was no I was, no drugs or alcohol just one beer <laughs> yeah that was <laughs> I, was I think, I think Gregson just... started to leave the simulation a little bit. He started to leave. Yeah, you were talking to someone controlling you. You were talking to your con- the person who controls you. They weren't controlling me. I snapped out of it, but no, I was like, I whoa. <laughs> All right, Gregson. Um, can you tell us about some of your catchphrases? I mean, we already talked about Joe, but... Um, I remember like freshman year there was you were always saying like you, you get in a mode where you're saying like the same thing for a while you're like man that that hits different you were saying hits different for a while um, and then you were saying let's go every time something good happened you'd say let's go and then you were saying um, what were it yeah, can don't you forget just, his names for the and then you had names for different restaurants I mean can you just get into that a little bit you, you have a whole language almost yeah this this might take a while, um, but no. So um, I feel like my phrases didn't start coming until sophomore year, but holy shit. That, yeah, that yeah. One. You'd be in the dorm. You'd, holy yeah. shit. Whenever like something really good would happen, I think it was like a positive connotation. Um, I would just go like, holy shit. Like if I got in the Shea Sales Center or something, I was like, holy shit. I think that was my reaction. I, it was just like stuff like that. And, uh, I know junior year, it was hits different. Um, that came back after a summer spent in Detroit. Had a little uh, epiphany there. And then I was just like, damn, life is hitting different. And that, actually, that's kind of when the simulation started. Um, <laughs> um, and so like, I just got to pre-camp. Uh, beginning of junior year and i just started saying it's different to everything like dang like i would take a glass of water after a 12 mile long run i was like damn that hits different and just take a bite of chocolate i don't know a sip of beer i don't know it, it would be something <laughs> and then joe joe was in the mix too probably end of sophomore year uh i was like yeah i was kind of a joe but you know then i came back a little bit it still was a joe <laughs> but obviously i called myself the eight god because i'd run eight miles and then there was a time I drank eight beers. So I was like, I'm the eight God, you know, that's definitely what it meant. So, you know, all, all sorts of, all sorts of phrases like that. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, what's up? What's up? That, that was, you said, what's up? What's up? Yeah. I say that. To, I say that to everybody. But. Do you remember the time? You say Do you remember when you barked at Griffin Butler, one of your first couple of weeks here? <laughs> Griffin yeah. goes, Gregson is in the locker yeah. room and it just Gregson and Griffin and Gregson goes, <laughs> And then later, Griffin, like, was telling people on the team, he's like, dude, that, like, new guy, Gregson, like, barked at me in the, in the locker room. <laughs> Why did you bark at Griffin? 
Dude, I don't know. I was in some sort of. It's just like I just thought it was funny. I don't know. I was just like I don't know. And then I mean, I've done got, that a couple times. Yeah, everyone got to know you. Griffin got to know you. That's a hell of a first impression. Yeah, Griffin got to know you, and he was like, "Oh, great." That wasn't his first impression of me, was it? Maybe second. It definitely was early on. It was early on, but once we got to know you, we were like, "Oh, yep, Gregson. He's just Gregson is yeah. a marker. He's he's a man. He, yeah. he he's a, he's a." Yeah, he's a legend. Like, this dude, like, I feel like when I came in, everyone's like, "Dude, this dude's just weird." And then I got so weird that it became like normal. So I was like, "Yeah, you became a worked. meme." <laughs> yeah. So we got one more fan question. Uh, Seth Guard says, "What is your biggest fear?" Oh gosh. Um. Obviously, like when I was little, it was the paranormal stuff. You know, it was the simple stuff, being in the dark, all that stuff. But when you get older, you're just like, you know, you're just trying to get your shit together. So, you know, you just want everything to be good, you know? So, I mean, like, you're just, like, nervous, like, oh, you know, hopefully I'll get have my shit together kind of thing by here and finances. and Because when you get older, it's, like, every decision you make affects another decision. So, it's, like, you know, so it's, like, you're always wanting to make the right decisions. But at the end of the day, you just got to trust, trust your gut that, like, you know, if you listen to your intuition that you're making the best decisions possible for your life and everything like that. So, that's that's pretty much where I'll leave that question, so. Oh, yeah. I think that's pretty deep, Gregson. You really told us a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to finish off, we just want to say, Gregson, what are, where are you off to next and what's going on? All right. So next Wednesday, March 29th, I'm leaving, uh, starting the big drive out to L.A. <laughs> but if someone would have asked me a year ago, like, I don't know, I would have never predicted that I'd be going to L.A. in April 2022. So pretty, uh, pretty crazy thought. But, you know, got to ride the wind. So. Ride the wind, baby. Ride the wind. Uh, any anything that we didn't ask you, like us to touch on? No, I mean, I think that I think that covers a lot for right now. You know, obviously, you'll see more of me later. So, you know, thanks for the support here, and yeah, look forward to this new chapter. So, let's go. Awesome. Thank you, Gregson. Thank you. See you soon, buddy. Thanks. Dude. All right, there you go, folks. I think there that's it, it. It's Matt Gregson. He. It's the most professional, casual interview I've ever seen from him. Yep. 